but I hope everybody's enjoying this beautiful day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right here we've got we've got a decent amount of snow. I mean, thankfully none on the roads or anything like that. But uh, right, best but, kind of snow there can be. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. How are things in the Rockland County business world? Hopefully, things aren't being snowed. Rain on the. I was trying to make a rain on the parade kind of thing, but it doesn't right, work with right, snow. Right, 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 right. Well, there's no snow job to to report on, but there we go. There you go. <laughs> but but we are going to talk about theme today is large parcels, and we're going mm. to start by talking about um, uh, something that the good people of the town of Havistraw uh, might like to know: um, the Hudson River Marina operator at 600 Beach Road. Um, is in talks with the town of Havistraw to buy the town-owned uh, land, the town-owned marina, essentially, the 60-acre parcel. Mm -hmm. um, the Hudson Marina um, operator, uh, they, they are known as uh, Safe Harbor Marina, um, has filed an application with the Rockland County IDA, the Industrial Development Agency, Mm -hmm. And they are seeking a bevy of financial incentives from the IDA to help them with the purchase of the marina. Uh, now, we know from the documentation that Safe Harbor has agreed to purchase the 1,000 slip uh, property from the town for $14.1 million. Um, mm -hmm. And we also know that this particular outfit has been operating the marina since 2019. Uh, mm -hmm. Prior to that, the Havistra Marina Corporation operated the waterfront property from 1977 to 2019. Now, Safe Harbor Marina operates scores of, they're a huge company, they operate scores of waterfront uh, marinas uh, nationwide. I, I, I don't know how many of those they own, but in this case, the, the, what they're you know, in talks with um, uh, the town and Mr. Phillips with is, is to purchase uh, this, this property. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the marina, um, is a, it's, a, it's a big draw uh, in, in the county. Uh, it sits in a, a sheltered cove in, in the, the, uh, the, the widest span of the Hudson River. Um, it, it's, as I said, it has a thousand slips and it's a big draw for cruisers and sailors. Um, and there's a, they, be, uh, they provide both brokerage services through a company that they recently purchased called Brewer Yacht Sales. There's a restaurant down there, um, etc. cetera. Um, the reason that companies go to the IDA is that they are looking for financial um, incentives and uh, specifically sales and tax uh, and use tax exemptions as well as pilot or payment in lieu of taxes. Um, and um, so they, they, have, they, have, they, they had filed an application um, in October, October 17th. They, they were uh, expected to hold a, a meeting with the IDA back in December, and that they asked for some more time, so presumably that will be pushed forward. Um, I think, um, you know, I think, I think the interesting... Uh, I guess the interesting point that this raises is, um, you know, we saw that when it came to Stony Point, um, round one, um, with the prospect of selling off their golf course um, on the mm -hmm. Letchworth site, uh, that there was just utter opposition to this uh, and referendums to, to vote it down. And then sort of we had a 2.0 this, earlier this year where we saw uh, the golf course was no longer on the on the block, but um, uh, you know Jim Monahan and, and the town of Stony Point were trying to get a developer to um, to build uh, a multi generational development on again town owned land. And um, even though the town initiated the referendum, it went it went up in flames. So it's interesting to see in contrast how in the town of Havistraw. Um, there are two large parcels in play where, um, where the, uh, there, there's, there's no, for one reason or another, for better or for worse, and I'm not sure which way that goes, um, there's no town participation. There's no referendum on either this publicly owned marina um, or the Letchworth side of Havistraw, mm -hmm. which is um, endeavoring, they're, they're in, in, uh, in the process of selling 
uh, a portion. Of, yeah. For, to a, do you have a question? Oh no, I I was just. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I was just saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So so they're 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 in they're uh, they've gone into contract to sell uh, a, a portion of of the Letchworth site to a developer who's going to put up market rate homes. Um, and then we have you know this story, which um, just simply uh, I, I would be I, I think if I said probably very few people knew about this, it, it, it would not be untrue. Um, and it just it's just and, you know it, it raises just an, an interesting um, question about when when these well, anything town owned is is sold, um, you know how, how much um, exposure an issue like this. Uh, you know, deserves. Mm -hmm. Now, also, just also what's uh, happening, and this is quite extraordinary, so hello, people of Congress and Clarkstown. Oh. There is um, along Route 9W mm -hmm. around that small little shopping center uh, where, where that um, corner, corner, corner luncheonette is, there's uh, a developer has just um, sold off uh, to to a, a large New York City developer um, who has a memorandum of contract, which it's not closed yet. It's supposed to close in February, but we are talking about fifty acres. Mm -hmm. That is massive. That's a massive, massive site that wraps around this uh, small shopping center, runs adjacent to the railroad. And um, is um, I, I large? I think almost entirely wooded land. Um, it is zoned commercial, commercial industrial. So I don't know if this developer has what this developer has in its sites because we, we don't have enough information. They haven't come to the town. They uh, not that we know of. They haven't put forward a proposal, at least not in any official capacity. Mm -hmm. But a 50-acre purchase. Oh, and also just to note, and those in the real estate industry will understand this. Um, mm -hmm. But this is what's called an assemblage. So this developer has um, actually the developer who has sold these parcels is um, Beryl Carniol, um, and he so he has sold these to uh, somebody named Yoel Gruber. Um, this is called an assemblage, meaning that they, they, they bought the, the various parcels from different owners along the way, and now they've been resold. And so I don't know what we're going to be able to uh, anticipate on that parcel. Will it be a huge uh, corporate center? 50 acres, I mean, 50 acres is very massive. Mm -hmm. um, that's, uh, that's a lot of land that would potentially be cleared. So. Um, people, you know, the people of, and that's on the way to have a straw. So again, people just just need to pay attention to these things because they might have something to say as these things unfold. And um, you know, the only way to do that is to communicate with town officials and to let opinions be known. I say that all the time. Mm -hmm. Have you heard a lot of opinions regarding this from from public input? Have Have you been receiving any feedback personally? Or have been, you know, surveying the uh, the land, the lay of the land, as it were, on this on this specific project or I this think, land. Yeah, on, well, I would I would be willing to to bet that absolutely nobody knows about the purchase of this assemblage uh, property of this 50 acres. But as we have put out the story on the marina, yes, I see that there is chatter uh, now mm -hmm. uh, because we have put the story out. And I think you know when when uh, when waterfront property, town-owned waterfront property, is 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 potentially to be sold. Um, yeah, I there I, I there is con I think people feel concerned. I think uh, I think there has been some curiosity over the price, 14 million for nearly 60 acres. Yes, there's a lot of uh, work needed there, but I the price seems um, uh, it seems. I don't know. It seems low, uh, 14 million, when we consider some of the other purchases that we're seeing around the county, and this is waterfront property. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not, I'm not I'm sure, quite sure um, how that has been figured out. Um, you know, the um, whenever uh, a company goes for financial incentives, 
uh, that is, um, you know, that is a deficit to the to the taxpayer um, for some period of time. So, it's public. It's public land. Uh, there should be. There should always be concern when there's when there's public lands. Yeah. I mean, most certainly, and and we usually see it in in cases where, especially, there is a vote on it, um, like the obviously you were referencing before the the Stony Point uh, potential one of this past election cycle, and let's not forget the uh, the one before it, um, and potentially the one later down the road. I mean, if there is to even be one, because uh, we've spoken about before, there might not be as much enthusiasm for. Uh, another one or from from a potential prospect yeah, i guess that's, a, that's an understatement right I, I i'm pretty sure that the current town board as it, as it is configured uh is not going down that road anytime soon mm -hmm. no matter you know what potential project uh is 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 thrown at them mm -hmm. um so yeah i i think that that's going to be stymied um but in Havistro, we you know there's there's these two parcels that people should be paying attention to and um uh, should take this opportunity to speak up if they have something to say. Um, you know, over the weekend, I, I happened to have the pleasure and privilege of visiting a place that is not in Rockland County, but I wanted to mention it on the radio because it was so exemplary and one of the most spectacular things I had ever seen uh, done with, with what was once a, an 80-acre farm, horse farm. Mm -hmm. So this is in New Canaan, Connecticut, and it's called the Grace Farm. The and, Grace um, Farm? Grace. Grace. Okay. Yes. And, and it has been transformed. Okay. A, 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 a foundation, you know, purchased the, the, uh, the farm, and they wanted to turn this into a place of, of true public engagement. Mm -hmm. And they hired um, a, a pair of architects from Japan who put up this, I'm going to call it a building, but it's more like like a it's more like a string of small buildings that makes up one building that looks like a river. It's called the River Building, and it's all wood and glass and and vaulted ceilings. And mm -hmm. it, it's okay. It, and it's, it's so architecturally, it's spectacular. But it's not just that. It's it's the way they're using the property. So it's divided into like it has a public a public gym where people can anybody can go in and use a basketball court. It's got a library. It's got um, a place where you can eat. A little tea house. Mm -hmm. um, a, a couple uh, buildings for exhibitions, which they had on 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 site. And then finally, the the gem is this um, is it's like an amphitheater. It's like an auditorium. Uh, that was just, it was so breathtaking, and I saw a, a jazz Christmas concert there. All of this was free, I, I might add. It was, it was all free, and, and there's a little walking trail. And while I was there, I was, I was thinking about the, the very sorry state of the HNA property down on uh, 9W in, uh, in Palisades. Mm. And how, you know, when you have, I told you I started this conversation today about large parcels. We have large parcels in Rockland County, and yes, you know, it, it requires, um, I guess, foundations or nonprofits to, to come in and, and essentially rescue these properties to, to, uh, to give them back to the public um, in, in some way uh, so that we, we, you know, we can enjoy our environment and we can enjoy one another, um, you know, in a cultural way. And I just would say it's this place will have concerts all the way through the season. The concerts are free, um, you know, and uh, it's it's about 40 minutes from here. So uh, the people of Rockland County, if they would like to feel inspired and and take a look at, at you know what how a how a farm can or a big open piece of land like the H N A property can be transformed to truly be something utterly inspirational. Um, Take, check it out um, because it's it's it was it was really I, I, it looked really cool on the internet, but when I got there, I thought, oh my gosh, hmm. this is really something. 
Huh. Yeah. Well, a fantastic recommendation. And so, yeah, for, if anybody's looking for any inspiration for what to do with that H&A property, check out Grace Farms um, in Connecticut. Hey, Tina, thank you so much for joining us as you do every Monday at this time. We do appreciate getting your insight into the Rockland business world. If anybody out there right now wants any more information on the Rockland County Business Journal, you could, of course, get some by going to rcbiz, that's B-I-Z, rcbizjournal.com, or you can check out their Facebook or Twitter. Twitter page, feel free to do so. We do encourage it. Thank you so much, Tina. Again, have a great week, and we'll talk to you next Monday. Okay, have a great week, you guys.